The beer you drink is awful, but it doesn't have to be. There are countless local breweries all over the country that make great beer. Amazing beer, also known as craft beer. Beer you can savor rather than chug. Each week, we'll take you to a brewery, brew pub, or beer festival, give you a tour, and then drink the beer. All of it for the betterment of mankind. The beer you drink can be great. So put down that red party cup and start drinking beer like an adult. This is Crafty. Hey sports fans and lady sports fans. Welcome to another episode of Crafty. I'm Grant, and today we're gonna start off at our house. Yes, there's an arcade in my house. My parents are very proud of me. As of July 2013, homebrewing is now legal in all 50 states, so we figured we'd dedicate an episode to it. Right now we're gonna to go to our friend Mike James, who's gonna show us the first few steps at brewing your own batch at home. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. Hi, I'm Mike James from 5secondfilms.com, and when I'm not getting drunk making short, funny videos, I'm getting drunk making beer. Come check out the brew house. This is my brewing partner, Mike Talamentez, and this is our brew house. We're now on all grain and doing 10 gallon batches. You can make good beer with extract, but with all grain, you have more control over the beer that you're making. I always think that you get a much better texture. It feels much better in your mouth. That's why you want to do all grain. This here is my roasted pistachio chocolate porter. But what we did is we took a pretty standard porter recipe and I loaded it with chocolate malts. And then with the pistachios, roasted them in the oven and then boiled them in water for 15 minutes and then let it sit in the freezer. And then that kind of removes all the fat. We weren't sure if that was really gonna work or not. One little sip and it was like, oh, so much pistachio. And could possibly be the greatest thing ever created. You're welcome. Another project that's in motion right now is building this keezer. And what I have here is this standard chest freezer. Inside, it holds three of these five gallon pony kegs. But what we're gonna do is use it for serving and run hoses through this wall into our super awesome backyard bar. And we're gonna be able to have beer on draft right back there. This has all been donated. Please send your PayPal information. I accept all forms of currency. We do mostly dark beers, actually. We've done a brown ale. We do a red ale, an imperial IPA I call Donkey Punch. And then also we've done some lighter beers. Did a strawberry suicide blonde. Pretty good, it's for the ladies. Right here, actually, I have a bottle of our Cascade Steam, which is a version of Anchor Steam beer made with the Cascade hops, which we grow right out here. Shall we go over to the hops? That was pretty easy to do. I mean, you just do a normal gardening box and they just vine out like this all naturally. They're a member of the cannabis family, so they got that going for them. Now that you've seen Edgecliff Brewing Company, let's take it up a notch. I would like you to watch me brew a batch of my holiday spice beer. I like it when people watch. The first thing is getting your start water. Hey. If you feel me from this way, it'll look like I'm peeing in it. Uh, all right, maybe that joke wasn't good enough to make the cut. And this here is gonna be our sparge water. A lot of people don't know that there's magic involved. They think it's science. Wrong. Yeah! Now, we want to bring this up to about 175, 180 degrees. This is gonna be 26 pounds of grain. It's 24 pounds of two-row malt. And then the specialty malts I'm gonna use is Belgian Caravian. I can't pronounce that, I'm sorry. A British chocolate malt and British crystal malt. Oh, one other important aspect, having a beer. What is your favorite brewery that's not yours? Dogfish Head is absolutely my favorite. Uh, the Dogfish Head 90 Minute IPA is probably like one of my favorite beers. Also the brewmaster there, Sam Calhone, is a very inspiring figure. All right, we've reached our target temp of 185 degrees, so we're gonna kill it. This is gonna go into our hot liquor tank. Using gravity, we're gonna move the water into our mash tun. I'm gonna begin adding all of our grains. Doing all grain verse extract adds a couple extra hours, but it's, it's worth the work. This is basically just extracting the goodness out of the grains. That sits there for one hour. And every 15 minutes, we will stir it with this guy, our badass mash tun paddle. The number one important thing is sanitization. 
Keep it clean, bro. Even if you think, oh, I don't know if I need to sanitize it, do it anyway. The next process is gonna be the sparging process. Our mash out temp, 140, exactly where we wanna be. The sparge has begun. Now we do this, just kind of over and over and cycle it through until we get the color that we're looking for. You know, it doesn't want to seem dry and you also don't want to have the water pooling up. You want to keep it like as evenly distributed as possible. As we go here, it'll come out faster and faster and faster. And the faster it flows, that means that we've extracted everything that we can extract from our grains. <sighs> All right, looks like our sparge is complete. We're gonna drain everything out into our boil kettle and then it's over to the burner. There's an artist by the name of Nelly, and he wrote a song called, It's Getting Hot in Her, so please take off all your clothes. A lot of people think it's about clubbing and whatnot. It's not, it's about the boil process because we're gonna add all those sugars and proteins and we're gonna raise the temperature, making it hot in there, and then they're gonna take off all their clothes. They're gonna be symbiotic relationship. Everything is gonna come together perfectly and then we're going to chill it with this guy. Bring it down to about 75 degrees. Once you're there, you can now safely pitch your yeast, put it in the fermenter, Kiss it goodbye. So now I guess there's this guy Grant that made some shitty beer and I guess I'm gonna let him talk now. But it's been real, God bless you. Thanks Mike. The next step is putting the beer into bottles. Why don't we take a look at that? We have our carboy, which is full of a delightful Simcoe hop IPA, probably a double IPA, depending on my gross miscalculations. What we're gonna do is take the beer from here, run it through a cheesecloth to get rid of all the particulate, put it into here, and then put it into bottles. Also, we have some of my other homebrew experiments. The first two are a prison-style apple cider, around 15% alcohol. The second one is an English Special Mild, around 5.5% alcohol. Good stuff. So what we have here is our empties. They're just regular 22-ounce bombers. You got to make sure to get the ones that were capped, because if you get the ones that have like the wacky twist-ons, or the corks with the cages, it's not gonna work right. You're gonna try to, you know, use this here dingle hopper, put it on there, the whole thing's just gonna go to shit. So, everything's good and sanitary. I washed my hands yesterday, everything's fine. And here today to help me out is my good boy, Tyson Bud. He is normally a camera operator on our episodes, but tonight he's just hanging out and helping us do a little bit of science. Is that my door? Who is it? Oh, suddenly audio, very good. Pat, do you want to help us out? Yeah, do I need to climb the ladder? No. Nah. I just need you to keep a hand on that so it doesn't topple off. Got it. So what we're using here is known as gravity siphoning. It's full of science and I'm not quite sure how it works. Clean and sanitary tube. To this tube we are going to add agua. I'm going to pass the tube to my lovely assistant and he's going to dump it in there. So we don't want too much water going into our beer. So we're gonna go ahead and kick her off. And as soon as it turns dark, that's when the fun starts. Patrick, who just happened to come over, is a good buddy of ours and the lead kitar operation expert of the band The Hugeness. True. When I first started pouring it in, it was kind of going all over and I don't want to aerate it. Aerating your beer while you're doing it is bad. You can end up with some skunky flavors and some overall not niceness. Right now I'm drinking a Calico Amber Ale from Ballast Point Brewing Company. Bro. Friends of the hot damn TV. Preach. Stupid. <laughs> because we're not doing secondary fermentation, the next step is to make some priming sugar. Priming sugar is essentially a solution of sugar and water that you dump into the beer for the yeast to continue to feast upon and produce delicious fizzy bubbles while it's in the bottle. True. Now you gotta wait for the priming sugar to cool down or else you're gonna dump it in there boiling hot. It's gonna kill a bunch of the yeast. Wanna make sure the sugar is evenly distributed. Mm, hoppy. Now it's time to begin the bottling process.
Now all the bubbles flowing through here are not air, it's the carbonation in the beer already, so that's a good sign. That means we've got a pretty healthy looking beer flowing through all these lines. Literally, as soon as I started brewing my first batch of beer, all my friends said, why don't you brew an IPA? So, I looked around for the easiest recipe I could find. And it just so happens, my girls, Christina and Hallie, have written a book about brewing, and so I decided to use their recipe. Whatever. Well, like any hobby, home brewing can be about as serious or as not quite so serious as you want. The average home brewer to produce their first batch of beer is probably going to spend anywhere from $80 to $150, depending on how serious they want to get with their investment. Well, that's pretty much it. Now all we got to do is wait another two weeks and we should have a batch of delicious beer and some fizzy bubbles to go with it. I only wish there was some way we could speed up time and try it once it's ready. Oh, wow. Tyson, come try this. So I sign and label each bottle that I brew. And there's a little bit of spooky sediment floating around in here, but it's all just extra protein. It's good for you. Bottoms up. The first thing I get is sweetness and bitterness, which is unfortunate. So obviously some of the priming sugar did not quite finish getting gobbled up by the yeast. But if you take a close look, you can see some fizzy bubbles moving around in there, which is exciting. You still get enough of the hop notes to make it worth my time. It's beer. It's alcohol. It's probably around 8 or 9%. I'll drink it. If I was to compare this to any beer, I would say it's a lot different than Pliny the Elder, both in overall taste profile, complexity, and upsettingness. But that's okay, because home brewing is a learning experience. So maybe you miscalculate something, whatever. You'll figure it out, you'll do better next time, or just keep making crappy beer. Well, that's it for this episode of Crappy. For more information about home brewing or whatever, check the internet, your library, your local home brew supply store. And as always, remember, drink responsibly. And by that, I mean, drink more. I think you got something on your wins.